Welcome to Lesson 8b, Pipe Flow Entrance Region. In this lesson, we define hydrodynamic entrance length and some empirical equations for it, and we'll do an example problem. Here's a sketch of the entrance region into a pipe. We assume we have a well-rounded inlet so that the velocity profile right at the entrance is nearly uniform. There will be a very thin boundary layer along the wall. That boundary layer will grow with distance downstream eventually merging at the center. Outside of that boundary layer, the flow is irrotational. We call this the core region. As we move downstream, the profile keeps changing shape, and the maximum speed in the middle keeps growing until eventually we get what we call fully developed. A fully developed velocity profile means that from here downstream, this velocity profile no longer changes. There still is a pressure drop downstream because of friction along the pipe walls. The region from the entrance to the location where it is fully developed is called the hydrodynamic entrance region. We use the adjective hydrodynamic because you can have other kinds of entrance regions, such as a thermal entrance region, which may be longer or shorter than the hydrodynamic entrance region. That would be the location where the temperature distribution becomes fully developed, which is not shown here. After the entrance region, we call this the hydrodynamically fully developed region. We'll talk about that in the next lesson. I wanted to point out qualitatively that the slope of this profile at the wall keeps changing within this hydrodynamic entrance region. Since tau w, the shear stress at the wall, is proportional to the slope du dy, where we define y as the distance from the wall, you can see that du dy is decreasing as we go downstream. So shear stress tau w also decreases downstream. From then on, it's constant in the fully developed region. So I write tau w goes down as x goes up in the entrance region, also called the developing region. But v or v average is constant in the entrance region. You can see that here. LH is the hydrodynamic entrance length. Because tau w is larger in the entrance region than it is in the fully developed region, this portion of the pipe has a higher head loss per unit length than does the fully developed region. In a later lesson, we'll develop expressions to account for this entrance effect. Let's do some analysis. In this entrance region, the shear stress along the pipe wall is a function of rho mu dv epsilon and x, where we've dropped the average subscript as we've done previously. V is the average speed through the pipe. Let's use dimensional analysis to generate the relationship for shear stress. Recall from a previous lesson, we did this for fully developed pipe flow. We had tau w as a function of rho, mu, d, v, and epsilon. And dimensional analysis yielded the dependent pi was f, the Darcy friction factor, is a function of Reynolds number and relative roughness epsilon over d. In this case, we had n equals 6, the number of variables, j equal 3, the number of repeating variables, therefore k equal 3 pi's. Now we add x to our list of independent variables, since tau w for the entrance length depends on x, as I've shown here. So here we have tau w is a function of rho mu dv epsilon and x. So n equals 7, j is still 3, so we expect 4 pi's. We can do this one in our head, since the dimensions of x are length, which is the same as epsilon, the roughness. We expect our fourth pi to be the same form. So instead of that expression for fully developed pipe flow, for the entrance region, Darcy friction factor is now a function of Reynolds number, relative roughness, and x over d. You're welcome to try this one on your own from scratch for practice. Let's do a similar analysis for the actual entrance length. LH is a function of rho, mu, d, v, and epsilon. We use dimensional analysis again. I'll just give you the result. You can try this one on your own for more practice. You may not be surprised at this answer since it's very similar to the previous problem, where Reynolds' number is rho vd over mu or vd over nu, since nu is mu over rho. It turns out, in practice, epsilon has little effect on LH. So if we let LH over d be a function of Reynolds' number only, it's a reasonable approximation. Here are some experimental correlations or empirical equations. The entrance length parameter LH over d turns out to be 0.050 Reynolds number. Note that this is approximate. For turbulent pipe flow, it turns out that LH over D is approximately 1.359 times Reynolds number to the 1 power. These are rules of thumb or ballpark estimates 
for entrance length. Now let's do an example. Water flows at a steady average speed through a long pipe with a given diameter and length. We'll assume we have a nice well-rounded inlet so that we have an entrance region like we sketched previously. And the entrance length will be some portion of this pipe length. We're asked to find the percent of the pipe length that can be considered fully developed. That would be this portion downstream of the entrance length. Well, first we must determine whether this flow is laminar or turbulent. So we calculate the Reynolds number, R equal VD over nu. We plug in the given values, being careful with units as always, and we get about 1.44 million as our Reynolds number. This is much greater than 4,000. So this flow is definitely turbulent, and thus we use this empirical equation. We write it as LH equal 1.359 Reynolds number to the fourth times D. We plug in our Reynolds number and our diameter, and we get LH is 11.973 meters. By the way, this quantity turns out to be 47.141, which is LH over D in this equation. In other words, the entrance length is approximately 47 pipe diameters. That's how long it takes for this flow to become fully developed. But the actual pipe is very long, 1.8 kilometers. So the percent of the pipe length that can be considered to be fully developed is calculated as L minus LH. That's this section of the pipe divided by L, which is the whole pipe length times 100% since we're asked for a percentage. This part is fully developed, and this is the total pipe length. Plugging in our numbers and having consistent units, we get 99.335%. So our answer is that 99.3% of this pipe is fully developed. You can see that for very long straight pipes, such as a water pipe like this, entrance length is negligible or insignificant. In a later lesson, we'll learn how to estimate the additional head loss due to these entrance effects. And in our analyses, we'll always include these extra losses, even in cases where the entrance effects are small. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.